Hi there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is the Cook Along Podcast. I have some foodie friends. That's what we call each other. That's a term here in the Northwest. I don't know if it's true of everywhere, but we have foodies here in Portland, Oregon. And what that means is they are food aficionados, that they love food, they love knowing what's in the food, they love knowing how the food is prepared, and they love preparing it themselves. And sometimes the more exotic, the better. And sometimes the more innovative, the better. So for my foodie friends, I was making a brunch and I thought how nice it would be since it's not breakfast to have some sort of a salad with it and started looking around and found a recipe at a website called Eating Well that uses pineapple. And I thought, well, this is a good breakfasty kind of thing. And it has some brunch and lunch elements as well. Let's try this. Yes, the flavors here are unusual, but it's a very simple recipe with very few ingredients. Now, I've cooked for these same foodie friends, and sometimes I get very elaborate, things that are complex and fancy. And I have learned through, I think, making this particular salad that when you cook something elaborate, it takes all day and the taste is worth it and it looks amazing. Your guests will look at it and say, wow. I can't believe you made this yourself and it tastes really good and how extraordinary that you were willing and able to work so hard with so many ingredients and make something so spectacular. This salad taught me the opposite of that, which is that sometimes it's even better to impress people with something so simple, slightly unusual, but basically simple with very few ingredients because then they say, wow, this is amazing. And what they're thinking is, I wish I'd thought of this. To me, that's a better response than, wow, I can't believe you made this and it's magnificent. This thing about wishing that they'd done it themselves, that they'd had that idea or tried that recipe themselves because it's so simple. It's like, why didn't I think of that? That's a sort of extra special accolade and affirmation that you're going in a direction that as a cook is really good. What I'm trying to say here is that simple is not only sometimes better, but sometimes more impressive. The fact that you can make something that tastes really striking with very few things that anybody can get can be very impressive. It makes you look more like a chef than the things that take a lot of work and you've spent a lot of time on. So today's recipe is called pineapple and avocado salad. And part of what jumped out is that I would never have put those two things together in my wildest imagination. And then it gets even weirder because you add onion. The recipe on the Eating Well website makes enough salad for eight people. I am only cooking for four today for a little birthday party dinner I'm giving. I'm going to cut it in half, which is what I did for my foodie friends. And I think I'll give you the recipe for half, knowing that you can either figure out how to double it to make enough for eight people or go find the Eating Well website on your own and take their amounts. This is kind of a Cuban salad in the flavors that it puts together. And what that really basically means is it has lime juice in it. Here are your ingredients. You need a red onion. We're going to cut an eighth of a cup, just a few really thin slices. And we're going to separate those into rings, which makes them obviously go a lot farther, which is why you don't need very much. I am actually not using a red onion today because I really love sweet onions and that those would be nice here and I already have them in the house, so I did not spend extra money to buy a red onion. You're going to need some ice water because we're going to do something that will come in useful to so many things you make later. This was a revelation when I first learned this technique and it's simple but very effective. That's a non-discriminate amount of ice water, but let's just say you need a little bit in a small bowl. You need a firm but ripe avocado. That, of course, is always a little tricky, right? There's famous humor about avocados, at least among cooks. 
is that you set it out and you wait. You wait and it's hard and you wait and it's hard and you wait and it's hard. And then you pick it up the next day and it's past its usability. You have to really keep an eye on them. You sit them on your counter. When they start to give just a tiny bit, when you squeeze them gently, then it's time to put them in the fridge until you really need them. And finding them at that ripeness stage in the grocery store is very difficult, but it can be done at least sometimes. Otherwise, you're going to have to plan ahead for this salad, which is what I did. I picked up my avocados about three days ago. You need some fresh pineapple. And if you're going to make it from a real, actual, honest to goodness, whole pineapple, you'll need about half of it, which is not a bad thing because it means that the rest is around for breakfast or for nibbling on whenever you want a snack. You need one and a half tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. This is not for cooking. It is just as a dressing. So you want a really nice olive oil that's going to have a good flavor to it. And actually says on the bottle, extra virgin first cold pressing. You want a tablespoon of lime juice. Oh, sorry, half tablespoon. And fresh lime juice is the best. It should be about half of a lime and about a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Kosher salt is less salty than regular salt. And if you want to learn about the difference between regular salt, table salt, and sea salt and kosher salt, go to my website, thecookalongpodcast.com, and you will find a blog. Go to the search bar and type in the word salt, and the article will come up. It's very short, but it will give you a really good sense of the difference between different kinds of salt just basic. I haven't gone into any kind of fancy salts there at all. Just your basic salts, why you might want to choose one over the other. In this particular instance, as is true in any recipe that specifies what kind of salt, you want to pay attention because kosher salt is less salty than table salt or sea salt, which means they don't want a ton of salt here. They just want enough to kind of brighten up the flavors. So again, quarter teaspoon of kosher salt And then some fresh ground pepper to taste if you like fresh brown pepper. It's always kind of fun to grind a little bit over the top. If you don't like pepper, just leave that off. No big deal. There isn't any special equipment for this. You need a small bowl that you're going to put your ice water into. You need a way to cut the pineapple and the avocados. And if you're going to use a whole pineapple, you're going to need to do that ahead. You're going to need to cut it in half lengthwise and then into quarters, just a half. Leave the other half for you for later. Remove the core and cut the outside off and then cut into little slices. You know, it's pineapple chunks. You probably could use canned ones or the pineapple that's already been processed from your grocery store. You know, it's fresh pineapple, but they've already done all the hard work. That's what I'm going to do today because easier is better. But I have done it with a whole pineapple and it's fine. It's really not that hard to do. They look intimidating, but they're not. You'll need another small bowl and a serving platter, and really that's it. So here's your first tip. This is something you'll be able to use over and over, and it's really a useful trick. Put your ice water, just a small soup or cereal bowl full of cold water, not full even, just a little bit in the bottom, not gonna need a lot, and then add to that a couple of ice cubes. Yes, this is my freezer. Yes, we do have an ice maker, but we didn't hook it up. So I do things the old-fashioned way in ice cube trays. I'm going to put uh, two's probably plenty. And just let that cool the water down while we slice the onion. Get yourself a good sharp knife because we want to cut this really quite thin. As thin as you can do it. And that's a little tricky, especially in the start, because the skin, you know, that outer dry skin is kind of in the way. But once you get to the inside, try to cut them as thin as you can. And I'm going to say we probably only need one or two slices, very thin. And then peel off the outside layer that has both the papery skin on it and whatever is right underneath. Peel off any other parts that have brown stuff on them. And then separate the onion into separate rings and drop them into that cold water. What this is doing is sort of taking the fire out of the onions. It just mellows them a little bit. 
and takes the heat out of them. So all that's left is the sweet. I'm using a sweet onion already, so I have an advantage. But if you're using a red onion, this is just the last sort of trick to get the hotness out of it. I don't know quite how else to say it. The onion part that kind of makes you want to go, <sighs> I don't know how else to say it except that. It makes that go away. All of that soaks away into the water. We're going to leave these onion rings in the water for 15 minutes. And while those are soaking, we're going to prep the other parts to the salad. So let's start with the pineapple. Hopefully you've already done your pineapple extraction. You've already cut it up in whatever way you need to. Mine, as I said, is in largish chunks. We want a half a pineapple's worth of little bite-sized pieces. And I'll show you a picture of these on the website so you kind of know what I'm talking about if this is new to you. Just get those into those bite-sized pieces and leave them to sit for a minute. Next to the onion that's doing its thing. You can buy special gadgets to remove the core. You sort of twist this gadget down into it and it removes the core and makes this sort of spring shaped thing out of the pineapple. But it's also just really easy to cut it into quarters, cut off the outside, cut out the middle core and slice the thing up. Well, I wonder if that's half a pineapple. That's the only trouble with getting it already packaged is I have no idea how much I need because I don't have a half a pineapple to gauge by. So what I'm going to do instead is eyeball this and decide for four people how much pineapple is that. I think it's not quite enough. I'm going to do just a little bit more. All right, now the onions are not done doing their thing yet. So the next thing is the avocado. No, actually, no, 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 no. Let's go to the lime next. And the lime, you're going to want to squeeze. And you can do this by hand, or you can do it with a juicer. If you're doing it with a juicer, you want to cut off the bump of the lime. You know that little pointy spot on the end, because it makes it hard for the juicer to do its thing if it's got a bump. If it's flat on both ends, it'll work much better. And then cut your lime in half crossways. If you have a juicer, you already know this, but for those of you who are listening, this is just a squeezer. You actually put the lime half in upside down. The inside of the squeezer is exactly the concave shape of the lime and it would fit right in there, but that is not what you wanna do. You wanna put it in the other direction, get a little bowl and squeeze it out. And all we're looking for here is half a tablespoon, which isn't a lot, but limes are notorious for not having as much juice as you think they're going to. I think I just did half of this lime. Turn it over and squeeze it again. Turn it back over and squeeze it one more time. It's just a thing I do, don't know. That. Oh, it does get a little more out. That is probably just about a half a tablespoon. So this lime is gonna give me a tablespoon's worth. I'm gonna save the other half, maybe for decoration. Here's a fun fact. You can store oranges in the same drawer as apples. Apples put off an ethylene gas that makes everything ripen when you don't necessarily want it to, which is why you can soften bread with it or keep cookies soft with it by putting a slice of an apple in there. But apples and bananas, if you put them near other vegetables and fruits, they will ripen much faster than you really think they should. But it's okay to put oranges and apples together because oranges are not affected by that ethylene gas. But guess what? Lemons and limes both are. So while it seems logical to store your oranges, lemons, and limes all in the same fruit drawer with your apples, don't because your lemons and limes will start to rot, but your oranges will not. All right, now the avocado. And I'm gonna teach you a trick here too. You may have seen this online. I didn't believe it until I tried it myself. Get your avocado and cut it in half the tall way. You know what I mean by that? You're not cutting across the way we did the lime just now. You're cutting from top to bottom with the pointy side up, cut straight through until you hit the pit, and then you have two halves of an avocado in front of you. Now some people would have you take a sharp knife and whack it down into the seed to get the avocado seed out of there. I am gonna have you pretend you can turn that avocado inside out. Put your thumbs on the back where the skin is, 
put your fingers around the edges and push with your thumbs and that pit will pop right out. Just plunk right down into my compost bin. Easy peasy. Much easier than trying to scoop it out of there with a spoon or thwack it out of there with a sharp knife. You gotta thwack it pretty hard to make that happen. And then just gently peel the avocado skin off the back. It should just kind of come. You may have to give it a little start with a little tear, but it should peel just kind of easily off. All right, and the skin we can discard. We're not using it for anything. I don't know anything you use avocado skin for, though I wouldn't be bold enough as to say there isn't such a thing. Now you need a platter, a serving plate. And you need a small bowl. If your lime juice is already in a small bowl, you can just leave it in there. And we're going to add to it the one and a half tablespoons of really nice olive oil. We're just going to whisk. Oh, let me get them measured here. I can't talk and think at the same time. So I'm using three half tablespoon measures of the olive oil into the lime juice. And then I have a tiny whisk. And we're going to whisk that together. You can use a fork if you don't have a little whisk. A fork is fine. And actually, this tiny whisk is kind of too big. It'll start to blend together. It's called emulsifying. It's going to actually turn into a sort of a salad dressing. The oil and the lime juice will create a single substance. Now, we're going to drain this onion. And you're going to want a paper towel or something to pat it dry with. Get rid of the water and the ice cubes if they're still there. And put that onion onto a paper towel and just pat it dry. The ice water has done its thing and we do not need it anymore. Okay, now we just assemble this. So we're going to slice the avocados. It doesn't have to be really thin. It doesn't have to be really anything. Slice them in the sizes that you think look nice or that look appetizing. Mine are probably maybe a quarter of an inch. And again, I will take a picture to show you that. I'll slice up the other half in the same way. The lime juice is going to benefit. It's not only as the magnificent and surprising flavor that brings everything together here, but it's also going to help keep the avocado from turning brown. All right. Now... Make a sort of a layer of pineapple on the bottom of your plate. You're going to want to make two layers, so only use about half your pineapple. We're not asking for anything fancy. You're just putting them on the plate. And then the avocado, use that first half that you cut up and put that on and among the pineapple. You have to do this with your hands. There's really no other way. It doesn't have to be on top. We're not looking for beautiful here. Interestingly enough, I think it's the onions that pull the imagery all together. Just put half of that avocado any old where on this plate with the pineapple. Spread them around. I mean, you know, if somebody were trying to get a bite, you wanted to get a little of everything, right? And then half of the onion. And these just stay in rings. Just put a few of them on here. This decoration. And you'll see now. You can start to see how it pulls the picture. It, it somehow makes the pineapple and the avocado look pretty, even though you didn't do anything to make them look pretty. Now, we'll sprinkle that with just a little bit of the kosher salt. Oh, golly. Okay, I just dumped it. All my kosher salt, well, not all, but quite a lot of it, it tipped out of my cabinet, but didn't fall out. The top just opened and left a, a pile. All right, so I'm taking just a little pinch uh, and just using my fingers, I'll clean that up later, to put a tiny sprinkle of salt over the top of the onions, pineapple, and avocado. And now... Drizzle about half of the dressing over that. Okay. And I will take a picture and show you that. 
It will be on the website, thecookalongpodcast.com. That's where to find both the ingredients ahead of time and the pictures of the product in progress and the final recipe. Now we go back and do the rest of the pineapple on the top. Again, it doesn't matter one bit how it looks. You're certainly welcome to arrange it in any kind of fancy way you want to. But it's not necessary because we're going to save the last of those onions to put on the top and pull the picture all together again. This, I'm finding, is making me put my circle a little wider this time, which is fine. It's actually a good thing. It'll make it fill up the plate a little bit better. Try to keep them so they're not stuck together. You have individual slices. And then, as I'm sure you've already figured out, we're going to put the other half of the avocado on the top of that. It seems like these are such different flavors and textures to put together, but I'm excited for you to get to taste it. The lime juice is kind of a miracle. It just makes all of these things that don't feel like they go together come together perfectly. And like I said, this is so simple. And so few ingredients. Now the avocado is on there. We're going to finish with the rest of the onions. This would be prettier if I was using red onions. I'm sorry for the picture that I'm not using red onions. But you'll know what I mean. Because then you got green, yellow, and purple. Which is beautiful. And I did do that the last time I made this. I just opted out of that this time. And then another tiny pinch of salt sprinkled over the top. It's actually much more fun to do it this way because it's like the chefs in the videos or on TV sprinkling it with their fingers instead of shaking it out of a shaker. So I guess spilling all that salt isn't the end of the world, maybe. And then, as you know, I bet the rest of this dressing, give it another whisk and drizzle it over the top. Beautiful, beautiful, so pretty. And then, just because, why not? This is the optional step. But if you want to, you can get a pepper grinder, grind some freshly ground pepper over the top. I don't think you want a lot. It's, for me, more of a visual than a flavor. But the visual is really nice of the pepper, as you will see in the photo I'm about to take and post on the website for you. That's today's side dish. Elegant, simple, few ingredients, easy to make. Wait till you taste it. Wait till your guests taste it. You're going to blow them away. I promise. Tell them where you got the recipe. Tell them that you like listening to the Cook Along podcast. Tell them how to get to the Cook Along podcast. Tune in two weeks from now for another brand new recipe. And next week, we'll have a quick bite. We alternate every other ones. And that's just my thoughts on cooking or food or something food related. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this lime, the second half of this lime, and I'm going to slice it really thinly. And I'm going to put it around the edge of my plate just for the sake of aesthetics. Let's make it beautiful. Enjoy your salad. And we'll see you again next week. And so until next time, happy cooking. 